South London's kind of difficult to try and recreate because actually it's not one thing, especially around Brixton, it's kind of everything kind of crashing together. Curly's Barbershop was a vacant building in Brixton, so it's kind of perfect location. I befriended a barber called Joe, and then we either bought or hired loads of his stuff off him. So everything in the shop is kind of genuine. And if you get it right, people just kind of take it for granted, and they're able to stay inside the story and the characters. Come on, man, out. All right, all right, can I just have my money back? Out! Come out of the shop! Come out of the shop, man! TV shows seem to be very heavy on dialogue and very heavy on explaining what's going on at all times and Run doesn't really do that. It's Dan and Marlon who've written it, they're first time writers from Brixton. Authenticity was huge with them. So for example, right from the get go on Run, we have a researcher. You don't get researchers on dramas. And as I was sort of out in Chinatown and out in London trying to meet um, DVD sellers, migrant workers, it kind of became clear that they were all from this one province in China and that was Fujian, and they spoke a very specific dialect. Fujianese is a um, Chinese dialect from a certain province in China, um, from Fujian, um, and it's very different from, from Mandarin or Cantonese or anything that I know. I was kind of going out and meeting people from within the Chinese community, and even they were telling me it was going to be impossible to find somebody that a spoke Fujianese and B also spoke English. We just didn't realise how difficult it was going to be and just by chance through various various sort of connections we came across Olivia who was working in Tesco's at the time. It probably wasn't a standard process of actors being with a dialogue coach um, but they stepped up to the challenge and actually when you hear Benedict and Katie and Tina speaking Fujianese it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> I don't think it was difficult to step into Ying's shoes because as Katie I was kind of in another world by being in Brixton. We filmed some scenes where there was a lot of ad lib. It wasn't scripted so in a way I was, I was free to do my own thing and the camera would follow me from a distance. Rum feels to me a slightly different way to make drama, where it's very sort of fly on the wall, isn't it? Like it's very sort of British realism, but it's also, it's been shot in Lambeth. You know, authenticity's been big for it. And it's been shot out on the streets with no control of the streets. I certainly haven't worked that way before, and I, I haven't seen much British drama that does work that way. It's not really a question of thinking about advantages or disadvantages of filming it here. We have to film here. Uh, and you have to cope with the realities of filming in central London. It would be easier to go elsewhere, absolutely. It would solve a lot of problems, but it would leave one massive problem intact, which is, which is the realism. I mean, how did you get it moved so quickly? I never touched Does that know what you're fucking like, right? Take the care, get the fuck off me! Hello, Mr. Fujian. Hello, Mr. Fujian. I think it's interesting, isn't it, to put multicultural Britain on the map, I haven't seen a Chinese immigrant film. I haven't seen a film about a, a, a black uh, homeless heroin addict on, on British TV. And I haven't seen a film about a, a Polish lady that arranges sham marriages. So there seems to be something very fresh going on with Run. And I think that drama certainly could do with a, you know, could do with a bit of a shake up.